All right, what's good, power people? This is the Power Living with Purpose podcast with David C. Henderson, and this is Tactical Tuesday. All right, now, Tactical Tuesday is sponsored by Opportunities Unlimited Business Group, where ambition and success unite. If you're a current or aspiring entrepreneur, uh, investor, um, venture capitalist, or just somebody who wants to increase their net worth through their network, then Opportunities Unlimited Business Group is for you. You can search on social media for Opportunities Unlimited Business Group. All right. Now, this Tactical Tuesday is a part is part three of how to actually improve your city. First one was businesses. Second one was nonprofits. This is the third one, which is youth programs. All right. Um, I have a cousin who is a direct a descendant of Booker T. Washington. Um, I'm the cousin to the family. Um, and he was telling me one time that um, he was doing, he was doing policy research in uh, Washington, D.C. And he was telling me that they have concluded um, uh, without a shadow of a doubt that um, cities who invest heavily into youth programming and youth programming see a drastic drop in crime um, teen pregnancy rates, um, high school dropout rates, all of that within five years. So like the kindergartners through the eighth graders are the ones that within five years, those eighth graders are going to, those, those 13 year olds are going to be 18 and they'll be either going out in the world and doing good or doing bad. But most crime in in cities are committed between with um are committed by the fifteen to twenty five year olds. But the one sometimes the fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen, or really like say high school age, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen year olds, they may commit more crimes because they know they can't be prosecuted as an adult unless it's um a certain level of intensity on that crime. So the 14 through 17 year olds are out there wreaking havoc in, in the city if they have not been properly mentored from kindergarten through eighth grade. So that's why if you heavily invest into kindergarten through eighth grade programming, um, at, in school program, in school programs that actually challenge their mind, not just the boring basic stuff, but actually creative more um, just out of the box type of uh, um, type of uh, teaching, then um, you engage them more. Then you better out, then make sure you have an after school programs and transportation so they don't have an excuse why they can't go. And then um, your after school sports and all that type of stuff. Make sure you try to make sure you have all the sports. So because everybody is not. Everybody doesn't play the the major sports. Some people may be better at the auxiliary sports. Some of the ones that are less popular. So um, then uh, from after that, then you got Saturday stuff. Now Saturday is not just for sports. It's also for other type of programs. So you got a specialty. Well, let me go back to after school. Not just an after school program, but after school clubs. Like you may not want to. Kids may not want to be in a certain program but they may want to be in a club and that club meets after school and they deal they talk about what they want to talk about you know what I'm saying for an hour or so forth they may not want to just be in the generic after school program so don't you know schools you don't want to just offer generic after school programs you want to also have clubs with an advisor and so forth so cuz some kids are passionate about one thing and that club is what they would be active in not necessarily the generic uh after school program um so you know, then you got, um, like I said, Saturday. All right. You know, that's where the community organizations come in. The fraternities, the sororities, the churches, uh, any other um, nonprofits and stuff like that. That's where they come in with the Saturday stuff. So, you know, every kid is not going to be playing sports on Saturday. Um, and then every kid is not going to be in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or you know, other type of stuff, you know, it's going to be, uh, or maybe youth choir practice on Saturday morning. Everybody, every kid is not going to be in that. So it's up to, um, the community to come up with more creative things with other creative things, uh, as well for the kids to be involved with, you know, um, on the weekends. Now on, um, Sunday afternoon, 
then, you know, that's where you can have um, real, real creative um, things going on, programs in the community that people can come out to. That's where your talent shows can be held. That's where, you know, your um, different, um, different programs that, you know, kids come up with, you know, the, your, your plays and your, um, your quiet, your concerts and all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? But the, the talent shows should be on a routine basis. Like every month, it should be a talent show in, in the, in the community, you know, so that the kids can have chances to come out and showcase the talent. Not every child is going to be in the choir. Not every child is going to be in the band. So you, you need to have other avenues, you know, so you got some of the most, some of the, uh, future, future comedians, uh, right there in your, in your community, but they've never had a chance to get on stage and, and do comedy because you're not having any talent shows in your community. Um, you got some of the future movie stars, but they don't get a chance to act because you don't have enough plays, uh, going on in your community. There's not, um, uh, documentaries going on where, uh, the youth can be part of those documentaries where they're looking, they're finding out about something, learning about something. You know what I'm saying? There's not a production company that, that is seeking out, uh, a kindergarten through eighth graders instead of just grown folks. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and, and cause today you got kids making their own stuff, but adults who know how to do production and all that stuff could work with kindergarten through eighth grade, eighth graders and help them to um, do that. Now, of course, middle high school too, but I'm saying if you invest heavily into the kindergarten through eighth graders, then when they turn ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th graders, you lower, lower crime, lower dropout rates, lower pregnancy rates, lower in school suspension, lower fight, lower fighting rates in, um, in schools and all of that, the whole, you name it, higher employment rates. Cause they're going to be more likely to, to get a job, either whether it's part-time or full-time afterwards, higher college rates going more going to college. So, you know, all of that stuff can be changed within five years. You can tell, you can go like, you, you can take the South side of Chicago uh, or, or, you know, places that people or people see maybe as one as a terrible situation. If you heavily invest in the K through eight, specifically in those six through eighth graders, because they're going to be hitting teenage uh, teenage years first. If you go from top down, then within five years, you can have all the crime that's caused by the teenagers in Chicago to drop down to drop down dramatic dramatically. Um, and it works and that will work for any other city. Like I said, the numbers don't lie. If you look at any city that is heavily invested in the youth, you will see dramatic, dramatic rates go down over time if they consistently um, do it. Now you can't have a thing go under one mayor and the next mayor come in and cut everything because he didn't. They didn't like that other mayor and they want to do stuff and they stuff it doesn't work. You know, it has to be consistent, you know, or county commissioner, or whatever, superintendent, whatever. You know, it's got to be consistent and you know it has to keep going. So. That's my tactical Tuesday for the day is that, um, and I'm speaking from experience because growing up in Tuskegee, Alabama in the eighties and nineties, I can tell you as a matter of fact that I don't, don't hardly ever remember, um, murders and crimes and all type of stuff that were being, that were, uh, being committed by young adults and teenagers at the rate that, we see in not just here, but other cities and everything all across the board. So, um, but I in terms of my city, I remember, I remember um, little to little to no crime that you hear about, like major stuff, little to no murders. I mean, you don't hear about, you didn't hear about teenagers committing heinous crimes because um, we had so many after school programs and youth programs and sports and outlets and everything. I mean, you could throw a rock and hit a, hit a youth program. It was so many programs. The parents were super involved with, with the kids. Um, you know, so that was the eighties and nineties growing up in Tuskegee from my, from my personal experience. And, um, so that's just an example to tell you that, you know, if that you, if you invest in the youth during a certain amount of time, you will see the benefits and the results right away. But if you, if, the, if it starts dropping off, then you're going to see a rise in the negative. So that's my power. Um, that's my tactical Tuesday, uh, sponsored by opportunities unlimited business group. Um, how to actually improve your city. That was part three with youth programming. Have a, have a great week. Stay powerful, my friends.